Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrek. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issues Decree 3 of the year 2021 to replace the first article of Decree 6 of the year 1985, which regulates the Sunni and Jafari Endowment Councils and their administrative boards. Article 1 of the decree states that the councils will be presided over by two independent authorities under the supervision of the relevant minister in charge of endowments, that each council and its administration is in charge of controlling its revenues and maintaining them as per Islamic Sharia, and the, that each council will be in charge of supervising and maintaining all of the endowments under its jurisdiction and regulating and distributing the revenues as per the decisions of the councils. The article also may maintains the definition of the endowments whereby the person in charge of supervising them would be appointed by the relevant council and authorities as per the procedures that have been instated by the relevant minister. Article 2 states that the phrase the minister in charge of endowment affairs replaces the minister of justice and Islamic affairs wherever the latter appears in decree 6 of the year 1985. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a cable of congratulations from Her Royal Highness Wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, on being awarded the Legion of Merit degree of Chief Commander by the U.S. President Donald Trump in tribute for his decade-long efforts to further consolidate the standing of the Kingdom of Bahrain as a strategic ally and influential partner in international relations, which further bolster common interests and maintains regional security and stability to achieve global peace and prosperity. Her Royal Highness expresses a pride in the merit conferred on His Majesty the King in recognition of his pioneering efforts and bold stances, wishing him success to further enhance the standing of the kingdom as a beacon of peace and civilized coexistence between all people in the world. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a cable of congratulations from the chairman of the Rashid Equestrian and Horse Racing Club High Committee, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Isa Al Khalifa, on being conferred the Legion of Merit degree of Chief Commander by U.S. President Donald Trump in appreciation of His Majesty's efforts in bolstering the historic relations and deep-rooted partnership with the U.S. He affirmed that the merit reflects the global appreciation of His Majesty's wise leadership and efforts in promoting peace and stability in the region. His Highness expressed his pride in this achievement, stating that it reflects the deep-rooted relations between Bahrain and the U.S. He prayed to Allah the Almighty to bless His Majesty with health and happiness and wish the people of Bahrain further progress and prosperity. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa was congratulated by the personal representative of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for the Environment, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa, on the occasion of being awarded the Legion of Merit Degree Chief Commander by U.S. President Donald Trump in appreciation for his support to regional and global stability. His Highness expressed his pride in His Majesty's being granted the Legion, which affirms the global appreciation of His Majesty's wise vision, which promotes peace and stability in the region and the world. His Highness stated that the merit reflects the efforts of His Majesty to bolster the historic Bahrain-U.S. relations in all fields. He wished His Majesty abundant health and happiness and the people of Bahrain further progress and prosperity. The National Security Advisor, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received the Minister of Transportation and Communication and Chairman of the National Space and Science Agency, NSSA, Kamal Mohammed, and the NSSA CEO, Mohammed Ibrahim Al Asiri. His Highness commended the NSSA for conducting research studies and developing Bahraini caters in the field. He planned the organization's plans and efforts to enhance cooperation with various countries to upgrade the space science sector and achieve further prosperity for the kingdom. His Highness was them briefed on the NSSA's major achievements. The minister commended His Highness Sheikh Nasser's interest in promoting the NSSA and stressed that Bahrain has now developed its capabilities in the space sciences. Al Asiri said His Highness Sheikh Nasser's support was a great motivation for its members to advance in their field and stressed that the NSSA is keen on further improving its performance.
The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, stated that Paris FC's qualification to the 32nd round of the Coup de France asserts the advanced level of victorious Bahrain team, noting that the qualification is a source of pride. His Highness noted his keenness on providing full support to the team to achieve the desired goals. He added that Paris FC's qualification to the 32nd round of the Coupe de France came as a confirmation of the team's outstanding role in its matches, asserting that the victory will motivate the team to achieve positive results in the next stage. His Highness stated that the next stage requires the continuation of efforts from the players and the technical administrative staff in order to make further successes. He wished the team further success. The Deputy Prime Minister and Chairman of the Supreme Committee for Information and Communication Technology, the ICT, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Mbarak Al Khalifa, today chaired the committee's 17th meeting held remotely. The panel reviewed the latest developments of the National Digital Economy and Artificial Intelligence Strategy. The Information and E-Government Authority, IGA, presented a report on cooperation efforts with the United Nations Development Program, the UNDP, which determines development strategies, including building a unified digital economy, digital initiatives, raising awareness on the positive returns of investment in the digital field, enhancing the legislative infrastructure, practical implementation of artificial intelligence and modern technology. It also discussed how small and medium-sized enterprises may attract investments to various sectors, including the artificial intelligence related sciences, data analysis and modern technology in school curricula. The committee reviewed the various proposals to prepare a national digital economy and artificial intelligence strategy as well as the main strategic initiatives to meet the requirements of development in this field. In this regard, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Mbarak stressed the importance of determining the entity responsibility for preparing, implementing and managing the national digital economy and artificial intelligence strategy. The Deputy Premier commended IGA's efforts to put in place an integrated system of e-services in order to be able to deal with the exceptional requirements imposed by the pandemic. The committee was also informed about the IGA's preparations to launch the 11th edition of the e-Government Excellence Award under the patronage of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Barak to shed light on pioneering technological innovations and initiatives. The President of the Cassation Court and uh, Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Judicial Council, Chancellor Abdullah bin Hassan al buainin held the annual press conference reviewing the most prominent achievements in the judicial field in the year of 2020. Present was the Under Secretary of the Cassation Court and Chief of Judicial Inspection, Chancellor Abdurrahman Sayyid Al Maalla, and the Secretary General of the Supreme Judicial Council, Judge Ali Ahmed Al Kabi. In his presentation, Chancellor Al Buainin stated, that the kingdom under the directives of the leadership is continuously making outstanding achievements in several vital sectors, including the judicial sector, which has excelled in providing services and legal work despite the repercussions of the coronavirus pandemic. al Buainin showcased figures and statistics of the recent developments to the judicial system in the kingdom as the percentage of closed cases in 2020 reached 101%. The Minister of Labour and Social Development, Jamil Hamidan, praised the unlimited support of His Majesty the King to citizens and his keenness on dedicating all economic sources to enhance their living standards to achieve his aspirations of providing the best services to citizens, at the forefront of which is providing an attractive investment environment that creates more job opportunities for the people in the kingdom. Hamidan also underscored the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to launch the second edition of the National Employment Programme which aims to create 25,000 job opportunities for 2021 as well as 10,000 training opportunities making Bahrainis the optimum choice for employment. Hamidan noted that the launch of the programme's second edition comes in the exceptional circumstances the world is experiencing because of COVID-19 pandemic. He stated that such economic challenges call for creative initiatives that turn them into opportunities for success. The government team has carried on its efforts in uh, discussing the budget 2021-2022 with the Finance and Economic Committees at the two Legislative Councils. Present in the meeting were the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, the Minister of Housing, Basim Al Hamar, the Minister of the Representatives and Shura Councils, Ghanem Al Bouainin, the President of the Civil Service Bureau, Ahmed Al Zayed. The Legislative Councils were represented by their two committees and the meeting discussed a number of topics 
which included housing, budgeting for the workforce under the supervision of the Civil Service Bureau. During the meeting, the plans of the Ministry of Housing were discussed, which are included in the 2021-2022 budget. The team affirmed that the interest of the citizens is a top priority despite the exceptional circumstances under the pandemic, which the Kingdom and the entire world are experiencing along with the effects of the low oil prices. The Assistant Undersecretary of Ports, Search and Follow-up at the Ministry of Interior made a statement in which he said that there are no objections to receiving Qatari nationals in the Kingdom on humanitarian grounds. He added that those who have been stopped at the King Fahad Causeway did not follow the correct procedures by gaining entry through the appropriate website. The National Medical Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus COVID-19 today held a press conference at the Crown Prince Center for Training and Medical Research at the Bahrain Defense Force Hospital to provide an update on the Kingdom's COVID-19 response. The Undersecretary at the Ministry of Health and member of the National Medical Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus COVID-19, Dr. Walid Khalifa al mana highlighted the importance of continued and full adherence to public health measures, warning that the virus is still active and complacency endangers the community. He noted that the increased number of active cases in January is a direct consequence of individuals not following public health measures, adding that the responsibility for eradicating the virus rests in the collective hands of citizens and residents. He emphasized that the Ministry of Health will continue to conduct inspections in coordination with relevant authorities on restaurants, cafes, beauty salons, barber shops, and gyms to ensure that all health measures are followed. Dr. Almana added that administrative and legal action will be taken against those who commit violations in industrial or commercial establishment, underscoring the importance of compliance with all preventive measures. He noted that in line with the directives issued by the Government Executive Committee, chaired by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, mobile vaccination units have been launched to provide COVID-19 vaccinations to the elderly and those with special needs in the comfort of their homes, adding that this new service is the first of its kind. Moreover, Dr. Almana advised the elderly and those with chronic diseases who wish to get vaccinated to register by calling 444, visiting the website Health gov.ph or registering via the Be Aware application. Dr. Alman are concluded by reiterating the importance of supporting the Kingdom's comprehensive national efforts to combat COVID-19. The infectious disease consultant and microbiologist at the BDF and member of the National Medical Task Force for combating the coronavirus COVID-19, Lieutenant Colonel Dr. Manaf al ghathani highlighted the importance of vaccinations which protect the community from diseases and reduce infection rates. He noted that the shipment of vaccines manufactured by Pfizer-BioNTech, which was supposed to arrive in January has been rescheduled due to production and supply process on the manufacturer's side. Dr. Gahtani highlighted that the rescheduled vaccine shipments will not affect citizens and residents receiving the second dose of the vaccine, according to current scheduled dates. For her part, the consultant of infectious and internal diseases at Selmania Medical Complex and member of the National Medical Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus COVID-19, Dr. Jamila Selman, reiterated the importance of adhering to all preventative measures aimed at combating COVID-19. Dr. Salman noted that the Ministry of Health will continue random COVID-19 community testing across the kingdom, especially in densely populated areas to ensure the health of communities remains protected. In this regard, Dr. Salman highlighted the importance of individuals who have been in contact with active cases not proceeding to community testing units and instead waiting for the relevant authorities to contact them and provide the appropriate mechanism for contact tracing. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 2,961, with 291 recoveries, 320 registered new cases. 145 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 167 are contacts of active cases, and 8 are travel-related. The Ministry urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus.